All right, so in the last video of our Asteroids series, we were planning what we were going to make. So I thought the first thing we should do is make the player sprite and make the player move. But we're going to get the project set up first of all and get some of those assets in place. So let's just get on to that. What we need to do is just open up a brand new Godot project. So I'm just going to say new project. I've leave this in my Godot project folder and I'm just going to call this one um, Asteroids clone and create a folder for that and create an edit. So we've got our uh, default empty project. I'm clicking on 2D here just so we can start with uh, creating this um, 2D scene. We're going to add a few folders in here, however. Um, so I want a folder for um, my uh, sprites and um, right click again, have a new folder for my sounds. And since I'm here, I'm going to make a new folder for um, scripts and, and a new folder for all of the scenes as well. We've got these four folders so that we can keep things organized, otherwise this tends to get a little bit messy. So the first thing we're going to do is just grab these um, assets. So um, I have the space shooter from Kenny. Um, you saw this in the last video, uh, the Kenny resources. So I'm just going to go into PNG. I'm not going to take everything. Um, I think I quite like the sort of triangular shaped blue ship. So I'm just going to drag this one straight into my sprites folder. Um, it usually does that, it's weird. <clears throat> First time, so I'll drag that into sprites. So we can see we have that player three in there. The next uh, the next one that we want to do, I clicked on the wrong one, is we want to get from meteors. I want to take, uh, um, to begin with, we'll just take this big um, meteor. So we'll just drag that one and put that one into sprites as well. Uh, I've also got those two bits of audio that we may as well do. So we'll start with these two. And uh, the two bits of audio um, are just downloaded from Sound Bible. And we've got this, um, the laser and the shotgun. Um, I mentioned them in the last video. We're just going to try and drag these into sounds. And uh, it went into sprites, of course. So we'll just click and drag and put them into sounds. So we've got a few of our resources that we can start working with. And then we'll get on to making this player. The player is going to need a scene, so I'm going to click this uh, basic uh, beginner 2D scene. I'm just going to call this game uh, lowercase g. I'm going to make make things as a child of this to begin with, just to get things up and running, so we can see how we build the game up rather than um, just uh, starting with the the uh, finished product. So we're going to add a child to this, which will be our uh, player. Now um, I'm going to do this as an area 2D, and um, the reason for that is this area 2D node has a bunch of things like being able to detect whether the area is entered or not and because an area 2d um, we can move this around as well so we don't need to have kinematic bodies or we don't need to have um, rigid bodies to do this we're going to fake that in code the area 2d um, press f2 and we're just going to call this player um, you'll see the little exclamation mark so that means we need to add in our collision shape but i'm going to add the sprite first so i'm going to add in sprite back on inspector over here and we'll take our player sprite over onto the texture so we can see our player sprite and as a child of that we also need our collision shape now I'm going to use a collision polygon and uh, the reason for that is because it's kind of triangular it'd be nice if it had um, if it had a bit more of uh, a match for the the, uh, the collisions so I'm going to click on this uh, create points up here and I'm just going to click at the top and then I'm going to click down on this wing, and then I'm going to click over here. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to try and make out the least possible amount of um, amount of um, points, so it's easier for the computer to calculate. So I've just got a triangle that matches this collision shape. So we've got the player all set up, ready to go, and all we need now is its script, so we can start thinking about moving it around. First, we'll just um, take this. Uh, so we can't select the children of this player, it kind of locks it, so we can't chain, um, accidentally choose it. Just zoom out and um, make sure the player is selected and uh, drag this into the middle. I actually think that's way too big as well. So what we could do is just uh, click on this, um, the scale, 
and uh, just click anywhere on the screen and drag and that will shrink the whole player down so it'll be significantly smaller. I'm going to save this game scene before I forget because if I want to test this I'll need to know which um, which scene is the starter scene so if I hit play to test this one and say select current that will mean that I'm going to use the current screen and it looks kind of a little bit stretched so just zoom a little bit. I think what I might do is uh, I've still got the scale on I can just um, scale it that way a little bit so I want it to look something like that just save it and run it again just to make sure okay that's kind of kind of what I want you can always play around with that later so let's add with our player selected let's add our script uh, it will be a GD script inheriting um, the area 2D and I'm gonna say um, completely empty for the template so I don't need to see everything hopefully this is um, big enough for you guys all right so what we're going to do is I think what we might do is just get it turning around uh, to begin with so I'm going to get my um, process uh, function then I'm going to need to uh, get some input and rotate the player so I'm giving myself a comment so that I can remember what it is I need to do and I'll write pass in here just so I can uh, not get the red line um, so in order to get the input we're going to have to get those input actions so in the project, go to project settings and then input map. We're going to add the actions that we need. So I'm going to add in uh, one called right. I'm going to add in one called left. I'm going to add in one called thrust. And I'm going to add in one called fire. Um, we're only going to work with the right and left to begin with. And then we'll do the thrust and the fire in uh, a little bit later. So we're going to add an event, which is a key for right. And I think what I'll do is I'll actually do the right arrow key, so the right cursor. And then with the left, same thing, um, I'm going to do the left. And since we're here, the thrust will be another key, and that's just going to be the up arrow. And the fire, um, as always, will be the spacebar. So those actions are set up. We can now use them inside of our code. All right, so let's use those. So. I'm going to create a variable for how much I'm going to rotate. Uh, I'll call it rot. And uh, we'll make that equal to um, this uh, new get axis, which is new to Godot 3.4. I'm just going to, um, this takes a, a, a negative action and a positive. So um, ours was the left and the right. This should give us a value between negative one and one. And we want to kind of like um, multiply this by something, I think. So I'm just going to say 10. Uh, for now. The uh, process runs at delta time so it's probably a good idea when we actually use the rotate to tell it how much to rotate by that we multiply that by delta so it's the same across all, all PCs, all computers. So I'm going to use this rot value to be how much we rotate and I'll turn it, multiply it by delta. And hopefully um, we should be able to test this and we should be able to press right and left and it should spin around. So um, the value that we put here, um, this 10 value, uh, we can use this. Um, it might be nice if we can tweak this. So I'm going to make this um, an export var, and we're going to call it um, rotate speed. And I think it's a bit too high, so I'll, I'll leave that as 5, and we'll use this rotate, um, rotate speed over here. And now if I test it again, it should be uh, set to 5. And the other plus of that is um, if I select the player, we'll see this rotate speed um, in here so we can tweak this as we need to. When we, um, If we're not happy with it, we can just change it without having to go into the code. The next part is just to work out whether we're actually going to um, thrust forward or move forward. Um, so i just give myself a quick comment. So move with thrust. What I want to probably do is just only move forward if we're actually pressing the um, the thrust key down. So we'll do that with if input is action um, pressed. That means it's going to happen um, anytime that the thrust button is down and then just a colon at the end. So anything here um, is as actually thrusting forward. And the hard part with this is thrusting forward in relation to the direction we've rotated to. Um, the way that we can do this is, um, and this is because basically I've, I've read up on the documentation, but the transform is 
uh, basically these properties up here for the player. So um, the transform is it contains its position and rotation and stuff like that. But if you look at the transform 2D um, class, you'll see that in its properties is a, a vector to X and that uh, takes into account the rotation, but this is the actual, this is its right direction and this is its um, up direction. You can see that by default, it's these values. So um, it's up um, according to um, according to the, the, the X and Y coordinates. So we can use that in order to work out what the direction is. And I'll just show you in the code. If we say transform.x, what we're actually getting is the right direction based on um, based on where it's rotating. So if we set its position, so if we just say that we make the position, uh, if I can spell position, uh, to be equal to um, to the position plus transform.x, and we'll multiply this by, I don't know, um, 100 times delta, just to begin with. And we'll just test this out to see what happens and see if we can fix the problem. You see when I'm pressing the forward now, we're actually going to the right because we use the x. If we use transform.y, um, we'll do it this time. We'll see if we're going backwards or, or downwards because um, that's the, the positive y direction is down that way. So what I might do is I might stick with the x um, just now and I might go back to my player here and um, if I go to the actual player object and uh, we rotate the sprite and the coll collision polygon 2D, then it'll be facing to the right and then we should be all good. So I can change the transform directly and this is just of the sprite here. So I'm not changing the um, the player transform, it's staying where it is. And I'm just gonna make this rotation um, 90 degrees and you'll see that it turns. And with this collision polygon 2D, I could either um, remake this or I could um, set its transform also to uh, 90 degrees and it should just match up. Um, by doing that now, what we should see is that um, when we push forward on the uh, the thrust key, we'll go in the direction that we're facing. So even if I uh, point anywhere on the screen, I'll go in the direction that I'm actually facing, which is um, pretty cool. Unfortunately, the movement is nothing like the way I want the movement. So we need to kind of make it um, drift around rather than just moving exactly in the direction that you're facing. The way I'm going to do this, I'm going to make a, a velocity uh, vector for it. And we're going to just have the key inputs lerp this velocity up or down um, based on whether you're pressing the button or not. So um, I'm going to initialize this to zero right now as a vector two. So vector two uh, dot zero. And then um, in this thrust here, uh, what we want to do is we do want to change the position eventually. But what we want to do is we want to change this value based on this transform.x. So uh, what we'll do, I think, we'll just try this out and see if it works, is we want to say that the velocity is going to be equal to um, a lerp. Um, so we're going to lerp from its current velocity um, to the velocity that we want to go to. So this is inside of my thrust. So we want to go to this value. So I'm going to um, control X that one out. Uh, and we want to go at a certain speed. So the, the, the weight is effectively how quickly it's going to go. So I don't know, I'll try like maybe yeah, five um, times uh, delta. So um, that just keeps it frame rate independent. And then um, we want to change the position as well based on this velocity. Um, so what we'll do is just do this outside of the if statement because inside the if statement this will lerp us up to um, from our current velocity to the one that we'd like. And then, you notice I've not got the uh, delta over here. So we want to say that position plus equals the velocity, whatever it is, times delta. So that will move us at this many pixels per second. We also want to make sure that we, once we've moved, that we lerp that value down um, 
So at every frame, we want to lerp this value back down. So we'll say that um, velocity, and then we'll say vector 2.0 as well. And we'll just use this whole same value, um, 5 times delta. And let's test this out. So in theory, what we should be doing is if we're pressing thrust, we'll lerp up to our desired velocity. Uh, then we move it, and then we every frame, regardless of whether we've got thrust or not, we'll try and lerp back down. So let's have a little look and see if this works. So it does work. It's not very floaty, and it doesn't seem to be lerping back down, mostly because I didn't actually... Um, Put this back in. So I did do the LERP. Um, unfortunately, I didn't store the value again back in velocity. So uh, let's have a little bit, another little quick test of this and see how this works. So it kind of works. Um, it's not moving very fast. So maybe want to change this up to maybe 500. And I might change both these um, values down as well, just to one and see how that looks when we play it. So we definitely move and we do accelerate and we're definitely drifting. I think that value needs to be even higher still. So let's try um, let's try 5,000 and give that a quick go. Okay, there we go. So we've got quite a nice little um, drift going on. And uh, you do see it doesn't matter where you're facing, it does actually eventually go in that direction, which is uh, kind of cool. But I do think we can kind of improve this a little bit. So this input as um, a bunch of different uh, values and there's some some new stuff in here we could actually maybe have a little look at um, this get action strength so uh, this will return values between 0 and 1 based on whether you're pressing it and it does have a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, sort of a, a smoothing in there as we do it so if I try um, this other way we see if this works so what I might say is that we'll have um, we'll just store a a thrust value and this will just be a single floating point value um this thrust will be how much thrust we apply and what i might do is uh we'll just make thrust equal to this input dot get action strength and uh, this is the thrust value so this uh, this manages means that we could probably get rid of this um this if statement in here because this value will be set based on this so now I think uh, what we want to do is we've got the thrust so we can just change the velocity based on that thrust. So if we just say um, velocity plus equals and we we'll use this um, transform uh, dot x, we'll multiply that by the thrust so that by that value we've just got and then just add something onto that. Uh, so it's going to be pretty small uh, so we'll just add that on and then the we want to lerp this velocity down so we can remove these two lines i think this is already looking a little bit neater so if we just um lerp this velocity back down to zero we don't even need to do this uh, line anymore get rid of that one so we're going to lerp the velocity back down to zero just put this above the movement and then we can move um that should hopefully work. So I can remove this pass as well. So that looks a lot neater. Right? We've removed that uh, that if statement in there. So we're basically just um, getting the thrust input, and then we're uh, making the velocity vector that we're going to go in. Uh, we're making we're adding on that the direction based on the thrust. So let's test it and see if it works. Because if it's not any better, it's not good. So that's not bad. It actually feels real good when you use that because it, it kind of like drifts quite a lot and it takes time to kind of counteract the movement. So yeah, pretty happy with that. And it's a nice, uh, it's not many lines to make that, that whole thing work pretty well. So I'm going to stop there with the video. Uh, we've already done enough. I'm just going to update the board so we'll have a look at where we are at this stage. So we've decided that I can't draw. Um, we've uh, borrowed some assets and got those all, all organized and done and we've managed to uh, do the make player sprite and make player drift and make player turn so that's not bad i'm going to stop there before the video gets too long and we'll move on to the asteroids in the next video thanks for watching